I'm next going to ask um, Dr. Beth Lang to come up, and she'll amplify on what Senator Murray and also Rep. Handy have referred to about the impact of poverty on children, the toxic stress that that causes, and the long-term the immediate and long-term impacts um, on kids living in, in poverty. Um, Dr. Lang is a pediatrician, and she is an incredibly strong advocate for all children, but particularly highlighting issues around um, children who are living in poverty. So Beth, come on here. Thank you. Um, my patients are still unvaccinated, so I appreciate all of you who are supporting them, and I appreciate everybody and all the hard work you've done in this pandemic. Um, the past two years have been stunning, um, and I would hope that we all continue to have grace and patience with each other as we're all on our own recovery journey from what the last two years has been doing. Um, as has already been nicely said, my name is Dr. Beth Lang. I'm a pediatrician at Waterman Pediatrics Coastal Medical Lifespan. I'm the current president of the Rhode Island Medical Society and a past president of the Rhode Island chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. And I'll also say a past board member of Kids Count. Um, in my 30 year career, I have seen vaccines eliminate some of our pediatric illnesses. I've seen new medical technologies save lives and genetic testing change diagnosis evaluations. Sadly, in my 30 years of practicing pediat pediatrics in Rhode Island, I've seen very little improvement in our state's ability to eliminate extreme poverty by providing children and their parents the supports they need to have bettering opportunities. And now COVID has stalled or even erased the little progress that has been made. In my practice, I still have patients and parents who go to bed hungry each night. We actually literally have stop and shop gift cards at our front desk that we hand out and I'm a middle class practice. Right now I have patients who are living in hotels scattered around the state and children who cannot go to school at all because they're unhoused or they need to stay at home to babysit siblings while their parents are looking for work or going to school. Currently the social, emotional, developmental needs of Rhode Island children are at such crisis level that our mental health system in this state is overwhelmed. Children living in extreme poverty are hungry and malnourished missing the key vitamins and minerals needed for proper growth and development. Children in extreme poverty are at more risk due to, for anemia due to iron deficiency or lead poisoning, both of which affect brain development, which in turn adversely affects academic achievement potential. Children living in extreme poverty are at ex increased risk of developing asthma, made worse by poor air quality in their neighborhood if they live near a highway or a factory or made worse by allergens if their housing, if they have housing, is infected by mold or cockroaches. Due to poverty-driven stressors, children living in extreme poverty have, as you've already heard, and I'll highlight again because it's worth saying again, have low academic achievement. They have behavioral problems, social and emotional development difficulties. Extreme poverty increases parental stress as parents try to care for their children while juggling the adult worries of housing school, work, food, and finances, if any of these things are even available to the family. And parental stress impacts parenting practices, which increases the risk of child abuse. Extreme poverty is a constant trauma. When stress is strong, frequent or extended, children may experience toxic stress. And I like to expand on that word that was used earlier. Much like the rings on a tree that change in a drought, Toxic stress is a stress experience at such a level that it prolongs activation of the fight or flight stress hormones in the body. Imagine if your heart was pounding without adrenaline every minute of your day and night. That in turn directly affects and changes the development of a childhood brain. With that leaves forever lifelong consequences of childhood poverty. The rings of a childhood's growth are affected by their poverty. In the study of epigenetics, we now know that when a child's biological rings are changed by toxic stress, this change is permanent, even passed through the genes to future generations. For if you wanna have some fun read, look at the generations after the potato famine. They can tell by genetic imprinting which one of your relatives were in the potato famine of last two centuries ago. Thanks to the proposed three changes of Rhode Island Works program, we have an opportunity and frankly an obligation to pass this important legislation to raise children and family out of extreme poverty. The governor's Rhode Island 2030 vision with its foundation of education, productivity and opportunity 
starts with addressing all of poverty, but especially extreme poverty. We cannot successfully chart a course for the future of the ocean state unless and until we address the dire economic, housing, and educational needs in our state today. We must increase the monthly Rhode Island work benefit and support this increase with permanent cost of living adjustments to a level that better supports basic living needs. We must extend the lifetime Rhode Island Works benefit to 60 months. It's time to, enjoy our neighbor, to join our neighboring states who provide this life-saving timeline for needy children and families. And we must, with an unrestricted two-year CCRI education, give families in deep poverty the knowledge and skills to be eligible for higher paying jobs. Early in my career, I heard a phrase that remains my daily guideposts as I work with and for children and families. Every adult was once a child, but not every child gets to be an adult. At this unique inflection point in our state's history, we have the responsibility and the resources to meaningfully impact and improve our state by lifting more children and family from extreme poverty. With the passage of S2316 and H7789, Rhode Island's children have a better opportunity of growing up safe, healthy, and educated, a better opportunity to be the adults that the envisioned Rhode Island 2030 needs. Thank you.